written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. That was Donald Trump back on the 2016 campaign trail mocking a disabled New York Times reporter. That moment was one of many nine years ago that left Iraq war veteran Brent Cummings questioning the direction of a country he put his life on the line to protect. Joining us now, National Enterprise Editor at The Washington Post, David Finkel. He's author of a new book titled An American Dreamer, Life in a Divided Country, which follows Brent Cummings' journey since returning from the Middle East. David, so good for you uh, to have you here with us. Uh, Thank congratulations you. on the book. Thank you. Tell, tell us about Brent. Um, he's someone who you've been following for quite some time. Uh, and in particular, these years, this book covers the years of 2016 to 2020, in, some, in particular, the Trump years. Tell us, tell us how that impacted Brent. Well, if you look at the book title, the subtitle, let me start with that, is Life in a Divided Country. And that's no surprise to any of us. It's uh, life has been feeling like you're living in the middle of a fire alarm for eight years now. And I wanted to write a book about what that feels like, not for politicians who in many ways are pulling the fire alarm, uh, not for extremists who might scale the walls of the Capitol building and suddenly become insurrectionists. But I wanted to write a book about uh, the rest of us. Uh, uh, and Brent, Brent was the guy I settled on. I met him in 2007 in Iraq. Uh, we spent a year living next to each other when his battalion was, his combat battalion was over there in the surge. And I watched this guy and I got to know him. And when it was time to write a book about someone trying to deal with what the country is becoming, almost a moral reckoning, I had seen the way this guy behaved, and he was such a natural character to write about because what happened to Brent is, is, is he watches the country these days, there's a very strong sense that he survived one war only to find himself on the edge of another one. So, so he was my guy. So that clip where we had Trump mocking that disabled reporter, that's just one of many. Of course, it was that came a few months after he mocked John McCain, mm -hmm. saying he preferred war heroes who hadn't been captured. Talk to us about the toll that moments like that, the degradation of the office, the degradation of someone seeking the presidency took on someone like Brent, who had obviously risked his life mm -hmm. for his country overseas. Well, I want to be careful. The, the, look, first of all, it's, it's, it's not an anti-Trump book or a pro-Trump book or anti-Biden or pro-Biden. Those books are out there. This, this is about the, the slow, corrosive effect on, on a guy who... who I, I think if Brent were here, he would describe himself this way. He's a little more Republican than Democrat. He's a little more conservative than liberal. He's, he's this man in the middle. And, and that makes him an appealing character to me because, because what was bothering him it, it, it's not Trump's policies as much as Trump's behavior, the, the, the vulgarisms, the lies. And, and Brent was brought up in a certain way to believe that if you act decently, if, if, if you're a moral person, you have a chance at a pretty good life. Good things happen to you. And at the same time Trump was being elected, Brent's father, so important to the way the, the man he turned out to be, Brent's father was dying of cancer, and, and Brent was watching this. As, as, as Trump was going up and, and his father was going down, Brent had been taught, if you live a good life, you're going to succeed. And here his father was dying, and this guy who Brent doesn't really like very much was, was ascending to the highest office in the land. And Brent was thinking, what's going on here? I was taught that bad people fail, and he's not failing. So Brent's country, David... Is his front porch, his pickup truck, driving on a Saturday morning to a gun range mm -hmm. to shoot decoys, and he does very well at it. And he goes back to his front porch in a country that's changing around him. He wore the uniform of the country, fought for the country. Mm -hmm. Where is he today, mentally? Well, he's, he's still he's still trying to figure out what the country is becoming, as as are we all. It's it, it, it's so fraught and it's so loud. And I think his porch offers him a little bit of respite from from all the noise going on where where he can try to slowly make some sense of of, of what his country is becoming. I, I don't want to keep harping on this, but. That was a tough deployment he was in. Yeah. The, the, the whole unit. It was. It was difficult. High casualty rate. And you know, he he against that. This is a guy who acted 
so decently. A quick example, and, and sorry to talk about something so long ago, but it matters. Um, there was a day, for instance, when uh, uh, an Iraqi national who was serving as an interpreter in the unit went off the fob, went back to Baghdad to see his family, and suddenly he's on the phone, he's calling Brent, he's panicked, he doesn't know what to do because there was a huge, huge truck bomb that blew up outside of his apartment building, wrecked the building, and, and this guy, this wonderful guy named Izzy, was outside on the street, daughter in his arms, she was bleeding, he didn't know what to do, he had nowhere to take her, and he was asking Brent, what do I do, what do I do? And Brent, this girl had no standing on, on, an, on an American military base, but Brent figured out a way to get Izzy out of that part of Baghdad into the eastern edge where this fob was. He worked the phone so that when the guy got there with his daughter, he could come inside. And he ran out to meet Izzy, sun setting, everything was about to be locked down, brings Izzy in, gets him to the medical area, and he's just sitting there with, with Brent and Izzy are sitting there outside while inside they're just, I mean, they're just pulling this huge piece of glass out of her head and saving her life. And Izzy is saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Brent is just, he said, I haven't felt this good since I got to this hellhole. Mm -hmm. So he, and, and, and that behavior is what has guided him through the four-year period I followed him from 2016 through 2020 when he was trying to make sense of what to do. Now, now Brent lives next door, for instance, to a guy named Michael. Uh, and they're next door neighbors. They get along. Michael. Total, total, he's a great guy. He's a total MAGA guy, in as deep as you can get. And Brent was thinking, how do I find a common guy with this ground? And uh, uh, early in Brent's life, um, earlier in Brent's life, Brent has two daughters. Uh, the second one was born with Down syndrome. Uh, the day she was born, he was saying to his father, what do I do? And, uh, and his father said, you're going to love her. And, uh, and, and Brent has loved her. And he's trying to bring that same thinking into his other relationships, for instance, with his neighbor, Michael. David, just looking at Brent's experience uh, and the community that he lives in, yeah. do you see a way out of Trumpism in his experience? Well, I think he is learning how you get along with it. There are other things going on in Brent's life and also Michael, the neighbor's life. Michael fell out of a tree 20 years ago and he's, he's a functioning quadriplegic. He... He, wherever he goes, he has a gun on his ankle. He has another gun in his wheelchair. When um, Hillary Clinton uh, won, for instance, he was terrified because he thought he was going to lose his guns and the ability to protect himself. So here's Michael navigating here, his life, Brent with all the other things going on in his life. So it's not just politics at the center, but there is that division between them. And there was a day, in fact, when they got into it a little bit. Uh, and they both realized if they kept going, this is going to cross the line. They both pulled back, and they've continued as close neighbors and, 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 and friends to some extent. Now, the question becomes, is that willful ignorance, or is there a lesson in there in how we all get along? The powerful and important new book titled An American Dreamer, Life in a Divided Country by David Finkel. David, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you.